Hey, it's me, Michael. Yeah. If you have watched the one video before, two two videos before, you know me. If you don't know me, uh, welcome, first time viewer. Uh, the chances are really high that you haven't watched the other video before, because as far as I know, so far only one person did. So, thank you, random one person. Um. Anyway, yeah, we're here to to talk about something that will not be a surprise but uh, not very cheerful as well but maybe interesting I hope so and will be a big big topic that we could talk about forever but I guess we will just scratch a little bit on the surface to see how far we get but maybe People will be able to have nice, friendly discussions about the things I'm about to talk here. I don't think so. Last time, uh, like two or three times ago, I talked about these topics. People were very, very angry. So if you are very angry with me, sorry, I guess, because I, I, I will talk about this, this, this movie here. Do you know this movie? I hope you know. Yeah, yeah. So, ooh. Very bad. Very bad. <laughs> Let's put it here. Yeah, yeah. I hope it doesn't fall down. I can't see it so well. Let's move it a little bit closer. I would usually prefer to keep some distance from the thing, but yeah. Yeah, that's visible. It's visible. Yeah, we talk about a Godzilla. Minus one and yeah, if you have watched the Academy Awards video, you will know that I'm not a big fan of this movie. If you are, don't feel offended by the many, many bad things I'm about to say. Because, first of all, I don't like it for its um, political stance. That will be my main criticism. But besides that, I don't think it's a very well made movie. I think it deserves all the praise for the technical aspects, for these effects and everything. Totally deserved. But the movie itself is pretty nah, not well written, pretty conservative, relatively normally filmed and uh, yeah, it's, this is just nothing really special going on here and yeah on top of that we get all this uh, nationalist stuff that I will be talking about but to give everything a little bit of context we will talk about some other movies like Shin Godzilla and uh, three of the other movies Mr. Yamazaki made because they're all so fun and lovely and uh, joyful and those will be the fighter pilot of course we will have to talk about the fighter pilot um, it will be the uh, great war of Archimedes and it will be fueled the man they called pirate and this selection of movies came together because i think it all fits thematically very well because like shin godzilla got some criticism in japan for being too nationalistic and i don't understand why i disagree with this opinion i mean i know why it's there and where it came from so we'll talk about that in a bit but um i disagree with that so i really really like shin godzilla i think it's the much much better of the two modern godzilla movies so if you don't like Shin Godzilla and you love Minus One, you will not enjoy this video. I'm very, very sorry. And the other three movies are all very similar. And Yamazaki himself said he used 
the research he did for these movies to write Godzilla minus one. So it's all uh, in line with his ideas, his, his thinking, his uh, world view, and I think that's very, very important because when she uh, minus one was announced, many people read about uh, the fighter pilot, or some people know it as um, uh, Eternal Zero, the original title is En No Zero, so the Eternal Zero is closer to the original title, but it got released as a fighter pilot, I guess, just so you can slap a, a wall cover on it, it looks more sellable. Anyway, um, that movie was written by a guy named um, Naoki uh, Hyakuta, who is a very, very right-wing politician and uh, yeah, sometimes writes novels that uh, are about the past, but don't really reflect the past because it's all pretty much uh, made up and uh, yeah, transports some interesting views. So that's a very, very, very right-wing movie. And many, many people were worried that Minus One might go in that direction as well. And some were very relieved and were like, oh my god, I'm so happy it didn't turn out like that. But I would say it's the same, just a little bit cleverer and a little bit more subtle. But um, the same right-wing politician wrote a second book that was adapted by Yamazaki as well, and that's uh, the aforementioned Fuel the Man, they called Pirate, and it's a really, really awful, horrible movie as well, and it perfectly fits in the narrative of Godzilla Minus One, who would have guessed, and the third one, The Great War of Archimedes, is a little bit different, is based on a manga from a different uh, person, this person's name is, uh, where is it here? It's uh, Nori Fusamita, and I think the manga is a little bit different from Yamazaki's general views, because he was actually portrayed as pretty bad, and um, the manga got praised by Hideaki Anno, so I hope that's a little bit uh, different, but uh, yeah, if, if it is, uh, Yamazaki got, his, uh, got it, his uh, Yamazaki spin. So these are the movies that we will be talking about today, I guess in another video I will talk about movies that will uh, that uh, handle a similar topic and are better and actually against a war. Um, I mean, not necessarily better than Shin Godzilla, because Shin Godzilla is pretty awesome. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that's the stuff we're gonna talk about today. And be aware, I will spoil like crazy. So, if you haven't seen these movies, and you want to, what I mostly can't recommend, um, be aware that there will be spoilers. I will talk about the stories in details because I'm more interested in the politics today. But um, be aware of these things. And uh, if you still want to watch them, there will be enough to find and see that it will still be worth it. So, so far, the uh, intro, I guess. Um, let's start with uh, Shin Godzilla, which um, doesn't fit this Yamazaki rant, which it will turn into a rant, I can promise you. Um, I will try to not use too much bad language. If you want that, you can read that in my letterbox reviews. They are very, very full of bad words. Um, no, but it's interesting that Shin Godzilla got this um, 
they got labeled as being nationalistic mostly i guess in japan my what i got from the international reception is more like people talk about it as it as being a satire which i disagree with as well because i feel like it's more a realistic depiction of what happened after fukushima where yeah what the government did and how they reacted might look quite funny and it, sometimes it's pretty funny in this movie but i think it's uh, too close to uh, home and if that was actual satire and meant to be really really funny um, it doesn't fit the overall tone of um, trying to speak uh, to spread some um, hope which comes at the end when everything's over um, so I, I don't think they were trying to actually make big fun of the of course they have funny scenes especially the soup scene when the new prime minister uh, starts his job and his noodles get cold and he's like oh my god I knew this job is gonna be hard um, yeah but what people criticize about this movie is that the heroes and all the characters are basically politicians or military and they save the day and it shines a friendly light on yeah, politicians and military in general. And that's the basic point people were angry about. And I get it. I know why. And I feel like that's not what Anno tried to tell here. So I, I, I talked with some people about it, uh, people who know much, much more about Anno. And um, uh, as far as I know, these people are right. So, for example, that Anno doesn't ha really have a political agenda. He like a consistent political agenda that he tries to present in his work, which Yamazaki clearly has. But uh, yeah, I, I totally agree that this isn't the case in Anno. He's way more interested in otaku culture and stuff like that. Maybe his own feelings. But um, I never got the idea that he has very strong political opinions. It seems that in the art of Shin Godzilla, which I don't have and I haven't read because it's a really, really expensive book, um, it seems that there are some ideas like the awakening of the Japanese and so on that might be considered nationalistic, at least in a sense that uh, yeah, Japanese have a common um, character or something like that. I mean, that, that's a very, very common idea in Japan. If you go to a bookshop, there might be a shelf labeled as Nihonjinron, which is actually like full of books that try to explain to you why Japanese people are different from others. So it's a very, very common idea. And even people who are not really politically nationalistic or big patriots have this idea that Japanese are a little bit different from everyone else and for some that uh, comes from a more practical idea like it's an island with relatively few foreigners and therefore less foreign influence on other countries but um, yeah I don't really believe all these things i think japanese are pretty similar to everyone else but uh yeah it seems there are some elements that you might consider nationalistic and i just realized we forgot to explain what i think nationalistic even means and i read some definitions just the common um wikipedia and uh, uh dictionaries and stuff like that lexicons and the common idea i got from this so usually people 
separate nationalist from patriotism and patriotism is more the love for your country and uh, nationalism seems to be more the concept that the nation is the perfect form to build a, a country and from this form of a nation the nation basically gives the political power its political power is based in the existence of a nation and this nation should be uh yeah, sovereign from everything they should be self-governed they should work on their own no foreign influence no pressure from other countries and uh, of course the people in this nation share a common history a common culture and um, yeah that's uh, basically it what i found so far it's probably a very shallow definition but i guess for what we want to talk about here it's maybe good enough like i said we're just scratching a little bit on the surface and we will see where we get there so it seems anno has this, these ideas that the japanese have something in common and share certain characteristics and stuff like that but in the movie itself i can't really see that and then there's the idea that um, a nation should be like should govern themselves they should make their own decisions they should do everything separated from the outside world and here of course in reality japan has this contract with the usa that the usa should help japan in case of war or similar things and this contract got as far as i know uh, criticism from left from left and right wing people so just um, if, if you criticize this contract it doesn't mean you're right wing or left wing i guess many people are against it and uh, want japan to be more independent but uh, yeah here in this movie of course the us um, are offering the help and they're offering it in a quite radical way first in the bombing of uh, this giant creature that's uh, destroying uh, tokyo and later they offer to drop a nuclear bomb which of course uh, should be avoided because uh, yeah you don't want that like normal bombs still uh, a thing might cause some destruction but not more than this creature but a uh, nuclear bombs might do so you want to avoid that so in a sense they're a little bit anti-american maybe and they don't want america to intervene at least in this nuclear bomb way but they're still cooperating with um, this female politician from America and they still seek out for international help, for example, from Germany or France. So this aspect of Japan working by itself individually doesn't really apply here. In minus one, that will be different. But here I, I can't really see that because without the help of others there basically oh, no? yeah. and so th that doesn't really apply and then this whole idea of uh, uh, the positive dis uh, yeah, showing display presentation the positive presentation of politicians and military i don't think that's either right wing or left wing it just acknowledges the existence of these two things the military is basically presented in a way that it's a tool that the government uses to execute their plans and i don't think that's really portrayed in a way of heroism or they definitely 
need them or I mean of of course uh, Japan has their self defense forces it's not a military that is uh, legally able to attack somewhere and of course it's it's debatable if you agree with having this or not having this but I don't see this as, a, as an expression of nationalism it may be problematic but I don't think saying that you should uh, that, that you should use the forces that you have I mean it's not denying that they exist but they say hey we have them and we're using them to defend ourselves against this creature and the politicians um, of course uh, even the better politicians in this movie are presented in a way that's still very politician like and not very nice like they make crazy uh, backroom deals is that what it's called and they try to wiggle their way up the ladder and stuff like that of course uh, even after all this is over they still discuss who might be the next prime minister and stuff like that but I guess that comes with the territories and um, changing that would just be like yeah, why, why are we even talking about politicians if we don't say these things exist but the thing here is like even the bad politicians are presented in a way that they're mostly pretty yeah not very able to do their job they're not very good at it they just worry about uh, image and power and these things so they get all wiped out yeah so everybody dies basically and but even they are not presented in a way that's evil or bad like the old prime minister in this movie is um, still worried about the people and um, so that's another thing why I don't believe it's like total satire they're all still relatively human like creatures um, but anyway um, I, I think some, some people criticize this movie for not having like a main character I think the government is the main character and goes through the typical hero's journey and that means in the middle of the movie most of the government gets wiped out and they have to create a new one a little bit better one and I just don't believe the heroes in this movie are the politicians just the difference is we have some politicians who uh, don't listen to other opinions and we have some politicians who do that and those are considered better what i read is uh, probably what Arnold felt here is a win for the nerds and the geeks and the freaks and the outsiders because those are the real heroes in this movie because first like the government is confronted with a situation and people say something that might sound weird and they say oh that's all yeah and later they call in all these freaky people like the outsiders who suddenly solve the mystery and find a solution that includes international help and it includes a relatively peaceful solution without big bombing without unnecessary sacrifices and some people criticize the movie for japan having godzilla as a source of information and even all this information gets shared with all countries in the world so it goes pretty hard on this international help thing and this goes against what I read nationalism is so I don't really think it's all that bad and evil of course sure, the government is portrayed in an optimistic way but I think who wouldn't want a government that's good like that believes in facts and science and doesn't care so much about um, whether or not they might become prime minister or whether or not houses might hurt their careers 
or whether or not uh, the thoughts any image or something they just do what needs to be done to save the people that's another thing in this movie of course they say stuff like oh we need to save the country but when they get this crew together they say hey they say we have to do this for the people now the word is kokumin which can be translated as nation but it, it's literally about the people of that nation so that's a thing in 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 uh, minus one where they just say oh we have to fight for our country nobody says we have to fight for the people of the country we have to fight for the country i think that's a very very big difference especially if we believe oh i forgot this one thing about the nation uh, or the nationalism where of course the nation is more important than your own um wishes or something so the well-being of the nation is more important than your own well-being that will be important sooner so anyway because of all these things i don't believe that shin godzilla is a nationalist movie um maybe questionable in some ways or maybe some characters in that movie are questionable even the positive characters but overall i think it's uh not that evil unlike other movies um let's see the fighter pilot from 2013 by mr takashi yamazaki um was my beloved unichi okada as the main character which still saddens me he will be the main character in fueled as well and that's junichi you can't do that to me just show me your nipples and i'll be happy forever but don't make nationalist movies please yeah if you don't know why i'm i'm talking about his nipples just watch the fable and you will be fascinated as well i promise i promise anyway the fighter pilot a movie about a guy and his sister i believe it's a little bit some time ago that I watched this movie, I, I didn't dare to watch it again. I, I can't take that anymore. Um, and they find out that their grandfather isn't their real grandfather. So they try to find the real story about their grandfather, which is basically a fine idea. Why not the little bit of family history? Um, but their real grandfather as well as their grandfather was a kamikaze pilot and died during the second world war and they j just spent the movie going to several people who knew him and talk about the past and the first few people just tell them hey he was a coward he was really really terrible he didn't uh, fight for his country and like when well, some days i get to one gentleman and he asks them something like oh, who do you believe your grandfather was and they say all the things they heard and he gets really really upset because he believes that grandfather was a real hero and the whole movie is just about this idea of the kamikaze pilots it's criticizing the government you might know these elements from minus one and um yeah basically they try to show that these people were really really amazing and great and it's just the um government that was wrong because they created the strategy that just sends people to death without even being uh, efficient because usually the airplanes don't even reach their goal to hit it and yeah we see in flashbacks the story of this man and he is like the greatest pilot in the japanese air force and nobody is better but he's too uh, scared to really fight because he promised his wife that he will come back to take care of her and the child 
And as it goes on, he realizes two things. First, he doesn't want the guys in his squadron to die because uh, he feels responsible for them. I think he's some kind of like teacher as well. And he doesn't let his boys pass the test, basically, so they, can, they can't go to war. And yeah, so he uh, gets this reputation as this real coward. And if they have some uh, actually battle going on, he always flies very high and he flies upside down and all these things to just protect himself. So he seems very, very selfish. And this idea of wanting to survive the war uh, looks pretty silly and scared of uh, being a real hero and stuff like that. Anyway, the main idea that uh, he gets someday is that, yeah, the nation is more important than yourself and he just cares about his life, his family, and so on. And he has a talk with one of his uh, pilots and this other guy says, oh, I recently realized I wanna devote my life to w help this country uh, become great again, yeah? And that's a point where he realizes, oh my God, this boy needs to survive. He wants to help the country. I'm just selfish. So one mission, they switch airplanes and uh, this other pilot realizes after starting that his airplane has a defect and he can't really go to war while our hero will uh, die in a kamikaze attack. That's actually successful. So I don't really get why they make the effort to tell me that uh, kamikaze are no good because they can't reach their goal because he clearly can i mean of course he's the best pilot in the universe but uh, that's a really weird scene and i don't get why and um yeah it's, it's all really really terrible uh, in the present of that story the boy who researches um has some some meeting with some of his old friends and they have this discussion where someone just says, oh, these kamikaze pilots are basically just suicide terrorists. And he gets really angry and gets in a fight and wants to prove that uh, those are really great people. And yeah, it's, it's basically just restoring the um, reputation of kamikaze pilots because they were heroes who were just trapped in this bad idea the government had. And some other things in this movie are very depressing, like the uh, female characters, like the sister of the m main character in the present story, um, motivates him to actually start this research, and then she just disappears. So she's just a catalyst to get the story going. You might know this from Godzilla Minus Run. And um, then there's the wife, who's waiting for her oh, who's waiting for her husband to survive the war because he promised to be back and um, he didn't just save his friend but he told his friend to take care of his wife so of course he goes out to uh, meet her after her husband died and she kicks him out and she just comes back and back and back and back until she finally finally falls in love with him and marries him and it's pretty disgusting i feel um not like just harass the woman until she gives in and uh, gives up anyway uh, yeah a really really disgusting movie as far as i remember the most horrible scene that you see in this movie like in shin godzilla i felt like one of the scariest scenes is this crashed helicopter in the city where we know oh my god like the city is destroyed the government is destroyed everything is destroyed and here in this movie it's the japanese flag and like war flag with the beams 
and it's burning. Yeah, that's the most horrible image in this film as far as I remember. So it's, it's really, really awful. It's really, really bad. There's a lot of talk about these uh, war heroes and basically the idea I got from this film is not that war is bad and the criticism the movie has is not that going to war is bad. The issue the movie has with war is that the government has strategies that kill their own people. Killing other people is totally fine, um, but killing your own people is not so great. And uh, yeah, it's basically the uh, things for all these movies. Going to war is not bad for your mother. Like, losing a war, going to a war that you can't win is bad. And that's what I got from this movie, and that's what I got from the Great War of Archimedes as well. Like I said, this is a little bit more on the war is bad side. That might be the influence from the original manga, which I haven't read. If you've read it, please teach me. Um, it's a slightly more entertaining movie about a ship construction. The main characters are played by Masaki Suda and Tasuko Emoto, who are a pretty fun uh, duo for about half the movie. After half the movie, it gets relatively unbearable. And here we already have uh, Minami Hamabe in a little small, small role that's slightly better than other female characters in these movies because she actually has some connections that enable her to help the protagonist. So this is a little, little bit less awful than in the other movies. But here basically the idea is that Japan is planning what kind of ship to build next. And we have two fractions of the military or the marine. And um, one group wants to make a big... Um, what is it called? A carrier? Like a, with airplanes and stuff. And the others want to big a huge battleship, which will be called Yamato. Right? And at the beginning of the movie, we actually see some scenes where war seems really, really horrible. But what's horrible is actually, again, Japanese people dying, not other people dying. So that's pretty bad. Anyway, those people who want to build the carrier are more like, oh my god, uh, we need to stop this other project because it seems that they get the money to build their ship. So they hire this uh, genius mathematics student who's uh, this relatively stereotypical kind of slightly autistic genius uh, that we've seen in a lot of Hollywood movies and it's not very fun but here at least the dynamic of the odd couple is a little little bit entertaining. Anyway they hire him to basically prove that the costs they planned for this warship are too in reality much higher and so he seeks out to measure boats and calculate uh, material costs and stuff costs and stuff like that to prove that it's wrong and the big final moment is a meeting where he proves the genius ship uh, designer wrong and uh, stuff happens anyway the, the big idea from this movie for, first of course um there's what is it called in english manchuria manchuria like the area in China that Japan occupied and basically created a, a puppet state. Um, that just happened. Uh, like, there's a chance to show that Japan did bad stuff in the Second World War and they just didn't. Or was it in the Second World War or slightly before? Anyway, like this war time. Um, I always get the dates wrong when what happened. Anyway, they had a chance to say, hey, the government really did some nasty stuff over there in that country, 
but that doesn't really matter because the Japanese didn't die, right? They won, they created that. So here in this movie, it's just something that happened, and that's the same in Fueled, where this just happened. They just go there and do their stuff, but that's, that's all right, that's not so bad. Anyway, uh, here, the main point is because of the things that happened, uh, Japan got a really bad reputation and somehow foreign countries don't really like them. Who would have guessed? So they're basically with their back against the wall and the war can't be stopped anymore. It will happen. So the big twist at the end, now be careful, twist coming. Uh, the big twist at the end tells us that because the war with the US is unavoidable, it's, it's not Japan's fault, of course, uh, no, they didn't do anything wrong, but because now the war with the US is unavoidable and the Japanese have this fighting samurai spirit where they will just fight until the last man died. Um, this needs to be stopped, right? You can't beat the US, that's pretty much impossible. So let's build this huge ship, the Yamato, which encapsulates the spirit of all Japanese and when the thing, the fighting spirit of the soldiers will be broken and we can accept defeat. But because of this, the great nation of Japan is able to survive and uh, future can happen and stuff like this. So yeah, you bring this big great sacrifice to keep stuff going and this is all so disgusting and really really boring who would have guessed that a film about mathematics and meetings might be really boring it is believe me it's not entertaining the fighter pilot was already not entertaining but this one is not entertaining like i said this duo is uh, slight slightly slightly and the female character in this movie is minimal better uh, it's, it's just terrible. It's really terrible. And it just completely turns around. History uh, presents Japan as the victim and to just not end the nation you need to sacrifice. Yeah. Again, this idea of a war that you cannot win. Going into a war that you can't win is not good. Now we will talk about that in Godzilla, yeah. But we have one more movie that's called Fueled. The man they called Pirate, and this is basically a movie about oil business. <laughs> you might have guessed it's not entertaining at all. It's really boring and really, really, really messed up. Nationalist uh, Unko. Let's call it Unko. It's really, really awful. I, I think this might be the most painful of these movies. I guess maybe, maybe because because maybe because I just watched that recently. It was the last one I, I watched when I took a break from Yamazaki because I can't take this anymore. I guess I guess some other of his movies are better. I watched his. Lupin the third 3D movie and I didn't feel it was very offensive but uh, I mean that was before I really to like paid attention to his politics so it might be that I just didn't listen enough I we will find out some other day but I guess something like Doraemon or it, it seems his always movies are pretty good too they're probably more romanticizing the past stuff like that i guess that will be better and i will watch it i will, I will give him a fair chance i made a list uh takashi yamazaki ranked worst to best and so far godzilla minus one is still the second best i mean there's potential to be higher also lower higher depending on the way you look at it uh, but fuel is so far the most terrible thing because the protagonist just gives like awful nationalist monologues all the time we get this whole idea of the corporate samurai 
who fights for his country and his oil company is the only one left in Japan fighting for the freedom or stuff like that. It's basically a guy who tries to do oil business while other companies don't want him so they're always fighting the majors and the majors are some at some point in the story equal with foreign companies because they have all been taken over by American companies so basically he's fighting against the evil nations uh, like America and Britain um, who try to get involved in Japanese business. Here's this idea that Japan should be completely um, What's the word? Not individual. I forgot the word. I've... Independent! <laughs> independent is the word I'm looking for. Um, should be independent and they should uh, do their business without outside interference, which at some point the big highlight of this movie is they're going on a mission to Iran to buy oil and some British uh, ship comes to shoot at them and um yeah they're heroic and tell them hey you've got no business and you can't interfere with our business so they don't and just go away well like the bully who comes in like ah i will punch you and they know you will not punch me go away and he just goes away that's the big spectacular tension-packed highlight of this movie Anyway, it, it jumps around the times a little bit. Um, the main story is in the post-war. Uh, and then there's a little bit before we get to Manchuria and stuff just happens there. Uh, the uh, protagonist company at some point gets uh, basically punished for uh, making money with this colonization of <laughs> China and they're really angry about it and that's really funny and weird and uh, it's pretty awful. So the whole idea of this movie is um, that this hero who puts work first because work helps the country and especially after the war you know, we have to rebuild the country. Another thing that happens in Godzilla minus one and um, yeah stuff like that happens and many monologues about yeah, how great they are and always this underdog perspective I guess at some point this is like Japan as the underdog dealing with the majors and uh, still winning which could be interpreted as Japan basically winning the second world war or again, at least a war against the same enemies, but here on a business level. And uh, yeah, basically taking revenge for losing the war, which will be back in uh, Godzilla Minus One, which tells us uh, <laughs> they could have won the war if they were smarter. Um, yeah, anyway, it's really boring, really awful. The female character here is, is really awful as well because uh, she's played by the wonderful uh, Haruka Ayase who basically marries this man and they, they both don't really have a say in it. They just get married because someone said they should and she uh, basically just cooks for him and looks beautiful or beautifully and uh, yeah it's just gorgeous in general and a good housewife who when husband goes on a business trip she who comes back of course he puts work first so he goes to the company but she stays at home makes gorgeous dinner and then sleeps on the table next to the food so when he comes home he really feels like someone loves him without having to give that feeling back and the big problem is besides cooking a woman only has one function in Mr. Yamazaki's world and that's giving birth to a uh, hair which she seemingly can't do so it's, it's her fault it's not his fault it's her fault and so she just leaves him and stays alone forever because she loves him so much and wants him to succeed and give his uh, fortune to the next generation. 
because it's much better than she staying with him and pretending that their employees are their family because that's his thing. He was a company and see, um, that's your family. And it's uh, really, really awful and uh, boring as hell. And I can't uh, recommend this movie at all. It still looks good. There are some fighting scenes when it comes to the war that look really, really nice. So, yeah, but uh, this one is based on a book by this right-wing politician as well. And, yeah, all the dialogues just smell of really, really awful, patriotistic, nationalistic stink and uh, the foreigners are of course all evil the evil businessmen who try to destroy the good japanese businesses or their military threatening um yeah japanese business and it's all just the world versus japan and japan wins yeah that brings us finally to godzilla minus one and this movie you probably saw it if you watch this video. Um, it's very well liked, not by me, but by most people. And most people call it a movie about the Japanese working together to overcome huge obstacles and uh, to do like great things. And that's one way to look at it but i think that's a very nice shallow layer yamazaki's hiding his really nasty ideologic ideas behind that's the thing they did when um he did the fighter pilot because the he and the writer they were already confronted with this idea of being too nationalistic and they said, oh, how can we be nationalistic if we criticize the government? If you criticize the government, you can't be a nationalist, right? That's impossible. You can't be that. But have you ever seen a nationalist who doesn't complain about his government? I mean, I'm from Germany. We've got the AFD, who's like the most right-wing party imaginable. And they just complain about the government every day. They criticize the government every day. Sometimes even with a reason, I guess, I hope. Uh, but usually they're just crazy. So I would guess just criticizing the government isn't really a thing that makes you less nationalistic, I guess. So, yeah, that doesn't really count. And this idea of Japanese people coming together to uh, do great things is really nice. But I think that's more a sense. Uh, to, to me, it gave more the impression like join the army because uh, the army is really great and powerful, but they need help from the people. So... That's what I got from the final act of Godzilla minus one. But let's maybe start a little bit earlier. And to say something positive about this movie, I really liked the Godzilla scenes. The effects are really great. The music is great. I love the atmosphere. That's all wonderful. And uh, I watched the normal version. And I watched the minus color version. And I think the monochrome black and white version is better i enjoyed going to the cinema less i even actually enjoyed it so little that after a few minutes i felt the need to take notes about the things that i dislike and i didn't have paper so i had to take notes on my, on my arm and my arm looked like crap but um Anyway, uh, it, it's a better version of the movie. If you like the movie, watch it in black and white. I think they, they changed the sound a little bit too. It looks really nice. It's pretty scary. And uh, yeah, the politics of that movie are really, really scary too. But um, besides that, the, the characters are just awfully shallow and boring. And some people say 
like the story of the kamikaze pilot is so compelling and emotional and i actually didn't feel anything i think that actors acting that's a uh, yunosuke uh, kamiki uh, who's usually not bad at all i, I remember seeing him and stuff like I think his first movie was Survive Style 5 Plus. was really good. He was good in the Kenshin movies. Um, I watched a lot of his stuff and he never, at least he never stuck out as being really bad. But here, I, I don't know if it's the character or his acting or, or what it is, but I felt like he's really awful. And yeah, these supporting characters are supporting characters. They function, they do their part. But I, I didn't really feel anything for anyone. The female characters, to take that away, are really awful. Like we have um, Sakura Ando, who's just there to talk and to take care of the child, because that's what women do. They take care of children. And we've got Minami Han Hamabe, who takes care of a child and of our protagonist. And at some point, when she gets too um, emancipated and tries to be more independent she finds a job just to almost die and motivate our character to go to war again um, yeah it's not very compelling I guess I don't know how people can feel anything for that but yeah Ugh. Yeah, anyway, let's go through the movie a little bit to point out some other things. Um, for example, of course, Godzilla comes. Godzilla is scary. You need to defend yourself against Godzilla. So, um, like I said, you can't really be angry that suddenly in the movie, ex-military people come to fight again that's not a problem i think and this whole idea of this character who survived war and feels guilty about surviving i guess that's a, a nice idea and this whole idea of oh, my war is not over is pretty okay but it's all too simplistic too easily solved and yeah, it just doesn't work at all, in my opinion. Like, where do we start? First of all, of course, we've got the end of the war. Japan gets rebuilt, and that should be a really terrible time for the people. I mean, we, we see a few scenes, like the people in the ruins walking around, and it looks bad enough i guess if you want a big mainstream movie i don't expect more but the situation easily gets resolved by just a montage where everybody is happy and suddenly they have beautiful houses and riding motorbikes and everything is over and uh, some people said oh yeah but here the soldier has to do this horrible dangerous work which yeah is presented in a way where it's horrible and dangerous maybe nothing really happens to anyone if i would see one of these basically they're taking care of the um, mines in the sea and they cut them loose and shoot them so they explode so they're not a danger to anyone okay cool enough sounds pretty dangerous but nobody shows me how that goes wrong and because our hero is such a professional soldier, his very specific skill set of being a soldier, like shooting and stuff, makes this job look really, really easy. And it's part of this fun montage that makes it all look really nice. It feels more like Rocky and we can do it. We can um, yeah, overcome everything if we just try hard enough. And it's maybe not nice and maybe a little bit dangerous, but because we're all so cool and great, it's easy. And Japan is suddenly a very nice country again. Takes about two minutes, I guess. Um, yeah, I really hated that. 
because they want to tell me that war is bad, but you just recover from war really, really easily. And one big problem our protagonist has is that he's too scared of attacking. You might think that's uh, like the self-defense forces like Japan in general. Is Japan just too scared to attack, to take the initiative and fight? Um, could be read like that and he will of course overcome his issues and maybe this movie wants Japan to overcome their issues as well and be an active uh, nation again maybe and some people praise the uh, portrayal of the Americans and um, yeah, they don't really do that much in this movie. Of course, the atomic tests in the... Is it called Bikini at all? Is that English or is that German with English pronunciation? I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, they, they cause basically this whole Godzilla situation and then they don't do much. They don't really get involved. The excuse is Godzilla already destroyed too many of their ships and... Uh, there's like uh, Russia causing potential trouble and they're busy with that and yeah they just say Japan hey uh, take care good luck and thanks for the fish or something like that and some people think this is really really nice that the US don't get portrayed as evil like in Fueled and I think that's uh, not so correct, I guess, because there are basically three points about the US, I feel. Um, first, uh, the US not helping Japan in this situation feeds into a very common fear among Japanese people that even though there's contract uh, have, uh, exists that uh, America is supposed to help Japan if there is a war, uh, most people don't actually believe it, or at least most people I have talked to, they don't believe America will come and save Japan. And if someone like Mr. Trump becomes president again, I guess it becomes even more unlikely if he doesn't feel like there's business to make there. So, in a way, this says, hey, don't believe the US, don't trust them, they will not come and help you, so we need to make sure we are alone, uh, uh, not to make sure to be alone, but to be able to defend yourself alone and uh, have enough firepower to fight back whatever enemy may come. And yeah, so Japan needs total control of their own nation. And um, yeah, just the whole movie shows us if Japan is just clever enough, they can even beat a threat that's pretty much the same as the US in the war because Godzilla in the movie just drops nukes on Japan and uh, it's basically the same so they defeat him so they could have won the war if they were smarter because the criticism is just the like the uh, government didn't do smart plans they just did silly plans and they sacrifice their pilots like in the fighter pilot and they didn't uh, use modern uh, Nazi technology I guess because they have this what is it called like if your plane is in trouble you push the button and you get ejected um, I forgot what the English word is sorry and I, I think in this movie it's a uh, German technology so um, that's pretty funny because if you just use uh, Nazi technology, it even puts the, the Nazi Germany in a pretty good light because, hey, you know, they have technology. They made the Autobahn, which is total um, quatsch, but uh, yeah, people believe it. So yeah, if you just had used this 
technology to take your pilots out of the airplanes before the airplanes crash, maybe you could have won the war. That's the idea I get from this. Like, yeah, they just had bad strategy. And as we know, going to war with bad strategy that kills your people is bad, but just going to war is fine. We will learn that later in this movie. And one of the main things I, I think is very funny here, um, in Japan there were plenty of American soldiers at that time, which is not shown in this movie. They're just not there, but everybody who watches the movie knows there were American troops in the movie, and the US don't even care about helping their troops. Isn't that basically like telling your pilots to fly their airplanes into enemy ships to kill themselves? Like you're sacrificing your own people, so basically if you criticize the Japanese government for killing their people like that, that's not so much different from them like sacrificing their people to not get in trouble with Russia or to have this to have to fight this giant lizard, uh, I guess. So yeah, I I think the Americans look pretty bad here. Well, yeah, no, yeah. no, and uh, fun. Other fun things in this movie, like when they finally decide to go back to war, they get all these veterans, yeah, and the normal kids are not supposed to play with them because uh, they should be happy that they've never been to war, right? That's what we are being told. Uh, so all, all the veterans go to war. And they look really, really happy when they prepare that ship. They're so insanely happy to finally go back to war and fight again. That are not people who have been through hell, I guess. Uh, just... Not to mention that all the trauma that our protagonist suffers from is not from war, that's from Godzilla's attack. That's weird. Shouldn't he be traumatized because of war? Or at least, shouldn't he be traumatized because he was at war too? Like, of course, Godzilla attacking is pretty traumatizing. But uh, it we don't see flashbacks from his war time where stuff happened. No, we see flashbacks from Godzilla attacking. So is Godzilla basically the same as war? So then, because then we're back to Godzilla being the US and uh, dropping nukes, and it's almost the same, right? Um, really weird. And yeah, when, when they finally decide to go back to war, and they're really happy about it when they have the big motivation speak. Of course, like I mentioned before, they're like, hey, we have to do that for the country. We have to do that for the nation, not for the people. We don't need to save the people. We need to save the nation. That's more important than the country. And they decide to do this because this plan has a chance of success. Yeah. Someone asks, is there a chance that we come back alive? And the other dude say, yeah. So they're really happy to go to war because that's the only problem if you go to war. If there's no chance of survival or of winning, that's bad. But just going to war is cool. You should be really happy when you go to war. And the people who were told that they should be happy to not go to war, they later join the war because the soldiers can't get it done on their own. And suddenly, of course, uh, they're very happy that they're there and supporting them and everybody gets out alive and everybody's really happy. As if joining the military is not so bad at all all because if you just win you just need the right strategy and everything will be all right right and uh, yeah that's a pretty nasty thing same, same like uh, to win the war of course and in shin godzilla we get a scientific solution um to stop the beast and here we have a scientific solution recommended by a military scientist if i remember correctly because of course everybody is ex-military and it doesn't really work so what do you do you just drop more bombs the thing that you wanted to avoid in shin godzilla okay there, there it was a nuclear bomb here's a normal bomb but what 
basically makes you win is dropping more bombs. It's not being smart, it's not being scientific, it's dropping more bombs on your enemy because dropping bombs on your enemy is good. And the craziest thing, it heals your trauma. Yeah? Our protagonist is traumatized from going to war, or better, from meeting Godzilla. And his war is not over and he's like really uh, suffering pain, which is very unconvincing. But when all is over, he says, oh, my war is over as well. As if you just need to win and you're not traumatized anymore. It doesn't matter what horrors you've seen in a war or what horrible things you might have done. If you win the war, your trauma's gone, you're cool, you're totally fine again. Great. That's all you need to do. You just need to win. Cool. I'm so happy. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, uh, uh, do we have other things? Oh my god. Um, yeah, no, I guess it's almost... Oh, oh yeah, Bateman, of course. Uh, yeah, this dropping the bomb is, of course, shown in a way where he drops the whole airplane with the bomb into the enemy, which shows us that first kamikaze attacks aren't that bad. You just need to get out the pilot which goes hand in hand with that weird ending from um from the fighter pilot where they always say oh kamikaze attacks are not great we shouldn't do that and then it works at the end like here they just say oh eject your pilot it's all cool yeah yeah oh yeah and of course we've got this final scene where we got a little Godzilla in the sea, and we've got this nasty thing on the lady's neck. And basically this tells us that we're not done with the war thing. It can come back anytime, we just don't know. And uh, we better be prepared for next time, right? That's what they want to tell us. Um, so, yeah. I get a very strong feeling that this movie here wants to tell me that first war is not bad as long as you win, second it can happen anytime and third you better have a big ass army to win. And I don't like this stuff. I don't know how you feel about it. You might think that I'm just talking trash here. That I'm maybe overthinking it, or I'm not thinking enough, or my thoughts might be completely wrong. Uh, I'm happy to be proven wrong. I would love to like this movie. But right now I feel like it's a big pile of poo-poo. Anyway, uh, this was a pretty long monologue, and I'm happy if you listen to me rambling here, and... Uh, yeah, please come back for more videos, uh, like, share and subscribe or something like that. Um, I will try my best and I will drag my co-host to do something with me. And in that case, you probably won't have to look at me because I'm sure he doesn't want to show his face. Um, but anyway, it, uh, even though I'm very negative, yeah, I have one more thing I want to get rid of uh, soon. That will be as negative as this and will will be much more depressing too. But I guess that's a very important topic to talk about. So that will happen as well. If you're able to speak German, listen to Compendium des Unbehagens. That's the German name of this podcast. And uh, there's already the thing that I want to talk about there. I haven't done this in this way in the German language podcast, there this, these ideas are all spread out there in different episodes. But um, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I don't blame you if you just uh, turn away from the screen to not see me wiggling my fingers around. And um, still, uh, thank you very much. I hope to 
uh, see you coming back soon and uh, have a lovely day. Enjoy movies, enjoy Japanese movies. If you enjoy Godzilla Minus One, please enjoy it. Uh, I don't want to stop you from enjoying it. I just hope maybe you have a little bit of a thinking about it. That would be cool. And if you come to the conclusion that I'm totally wrong, that's totally cool. Just don't be nasty in the comments, I guess. I would like to have nice viewers. <laughs> and if you disagree, I, I'm happy. I'm happy to have a nice discussion and uh, if some people want to give me ideas of what I might have gone gotten wrong here I will be happy to uh, discuss that in another episode. Uh, so far thanks for uh, watching and see you. Bye bye. Uh -huh.